Kid, Miss Lacey here, and we're off to another week of Teen Kid. Isn't it crazy to think that it's almost summer, y'all? Is it seven more weeks left of school? And then we'll be done and we'll have a break. But anyway, um, I'm excited to bring this message to you today. Um, at first, when I was looking through it, I guess the devil was getting in my mind and I was thinking, okay. Um, we can work something with this. And if I can pick on Miss Jania for a little bit, um, after Miss Mr. Steve um, did his wonderful presentation of Joseph and um, talking about all that, Miss Jania looked over at me and she said, I'm so excited about my lesson. It's going to be so cool. It's about Job. And I thought, mm -hmm. okay, okay. Because let me just tell you the title of my lesson. Why do we go through hard times. And I was thinking, okay, Mr. Steve gets this cool lesson about Joseph and Miss Jania gets the next cool lesson about Job. And, I'm, and I have, why do we go through hard times? But I prayed about it and I got out of my feelings a little bit. And it really occurred to me, y'all, this is the lesson we don't want to miss right here. This is our time to pause and stop and reflect and really grasp everything that Joseph, we learned that he went through. And Mr. Steve really just scraped the surface of him. We only talked about a few things like Joseph had a really hard time in his life. And then next week, we're gonna learn about Job. And he went through even more stuff. All of our worst nightmares come true through Job. And so this is what um, we know a few weeks ago, we talked about how um, God created the earth in seven days. And after each day and after he did everything, what did he say? He said, it was good. On the seventh day, he rested. It was good. Well, then we know that sin entered the earth. And praise the Lord. Remember, Miss Janine talked about that very first day, God separated the light from the darkness. And I'm so thankful that God had a plan that Jesus was already the light and he had already put that plan into motion for a sinner like me. And he brought me through, um, what am I trying to say? He just, he can bring you through bad places, dark times, despair, suffering, and he has a plan to bring it all full circle um, today. And our passage today is about Peter. He wrote it, but John and Paul also touched on it. And in John 16, 33, um, it says, I have told you these things so that in me you, have, may have, you may have peace. You will have suffering in this world and be courageous. I have conquered the world. And the next verse in Philippians that Paul wrote was, more than, I, more than that, I also consider everything to be a loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Because of him, I have suffered the loss of all things and consider them as nothing. That's really not what it says. And if y'all want a cool um, verse to look up, the Philippians 3.8, especially you boys. But I have suffered the loss of all things and consider them as nothing so that I may gain Christ. So we're going to um, skip over here. The title is Christian Suffering. And suffering can come in all forms. It can be physical. It can be emotional. And it can even be spiritual. And that's when it gets really bad. But hopefully we'll talk about things, these things, and you'll know what to do if you ever face any kind of trial because let's face it the longer we live we're certain that we're going to go through some bad times so pause the video do what you need to do go get your trusty teen kid bible and um, i'll meet you back here in just a second okay teen, teen kid um get your teen bible out we're going to the new testament and we're going to first first peter chapter four and I always like for y'all to actually look up these verses because it's good practice for y'all. Um, first Peter, it doesn't have a page number, but um, go to page 689 and find the bold number four. And we're going to skip to, um, to verse 12. And we're going to read through verse 19. 
Dear friends, do not be surprised when the fiery ordeal comes among you to test you as if something unusual were happening to you. So what this is saying is don't be surprised. And I have, I guess, a warped sense of humor sometimes. But when I read this, I almost, it was comical to me because I thought of your typical a southern woman saying, let me read it again. Don't be surprised when the fiery ordeal comes among you to test you as if something were unusual happening to you. Donna Jo, aren't you surprised that that happened to me today? Can you believe it? Now, I know it's funny, but I know I've caught it, um, saying stuff like that, and I know that I've heard it too. Oh my goodness, can you believe that such and such happened to so and so today? Y'all have heard it, right? But the Bible doesn't say that. I was thinking of our human nature, but the Bible steps on our toes and he uses this word to rebuke us and correct us. And praise God we have it in these times. So moving along, instead, rejoice as you share and the sufferings of Christ, stay with me, so that you may also rejoice with great joy when his glory is revealed. Now, I don't know about you, but can you just see Joseph in the bottom of that pit? Praise the Lord, I'm in the bottom of this pit. Do you think that that's what he said? Praise the Lord, God is with me, I'm in the jail right now because of something I did not even do. God is so good. He is fantastic. Now, do you really think that that's what Joseph said? But that's what the Bible's telling us to do. Or let me put it in terms you might can relate. Praise the Lord. My neighbor's house just got blew away from a tornado. It sounds pretty silly, doesn't it? Because, you know, nothing like that could ever happen to me, right? Praise the Lord. My parents are fighting again. God is good. He is with me. He shall not fail. Or we all might know somebody or we might even be one ourselves. I don't have anything to, I don't have anything to eat tonight for supper, but I'm so happy. I'm so joyful because the Bible says so right here. That's not what we think, is it? Let me read that again. Rejoice as you share in the sufferings of Christ so that you may also rejoice with great joy when his glory is revealed. If you are ridiculed for the name of Christ, you are blessed. My best friend, I heard them, they made fun of me today. They said something about me that I didn't like and I'm just joyful. You are blessed because of the spirit of glory and of God rest in you. That's not what I'm saying. We don't take joy in the trials that we go through. But what I can tell you is this. We can praise God through those bad things that we go through. We can praise him when times are hard we're not excited when that when those things happen to us but if we keep our focus on him he can give us peace romans 8 37 says in all of these things all good or bad we are more than conquerors through him who loves us philippians 4 13 says we all know this, my mission friend kids. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. It's been a long time since I've heard it put that way. Well, why do we go through suffering? Why does he tell us to be joyful? Because it hurts. We have emotions that get in the way. I'm angry, I'm mad, I'm sad, I'm hurt. I'm despaired, I'm suffering. And he tells me to be joy, joyful in it all. Doesn't make sense. 
until you really think about it. Boys and girls, he is calling us to be warriors. He is turning us in to warriors for him, mighty warriors. And if we don't ever experience these things, we can't get to the other side of it. We can't know his glorious peace. And we have all these things going around us. We can turn on the news right now and y'all, it's sad. But he told us to not despair, that his plans for us is good. All these bad things are not of his plan. His plan is to prosper us, but because of sin, we have to go through these things and he uses them to refine us and to make us more like him and to get into his way of thinking and not ours. So I'm challenging y'all today to rise up to the occasion, stay in his word, pray about it, whatever it is that you're going through. Just something silly like my lesson today. He turned something that I thought was really boring and bland to a challenge. Rise up, kids. Y'all are not victims. I'm not a victim. We are made in his image and we are victors. And look around the room, whoever you're with, he has strategically placed us with the people that we're around in our life, our brothers and our sisters in Christ, our friends at school, Mr. Josh, Mr. Steve, Brother John, all of these people he has placed here for a time such as this. And we can bond, we can come together and we can get through whatever it is that we're going through, not by ourselves, but with each other and with God's help. We don't have to fight these battles alone. Yes, bad things come, but a few months ago it came out, um, I saw it on Facebook. Um, if any of you know Mr. Rogers, if not, ask your mama or your daddy or whoever, and they'll introduce you to. His mother always told them when something bad happens, look on the news, and then the next thing you see is there's people helping. There's somebody always there to come clean up the aftermath of that tornado. There's always going to be somebody to help you through whatever it is, whatever hardship that you're going through, not only at your age, but as you grow and become an adult, because all the people that you're going to be around in your life, you have to place yourself around people that will support you and um, speak positivity into you. And let me tell you another little secret. The victory is won. You cannot fail. You cannot fail. With When you have Jesus at your side, you're going to win and you're going to come out as a victor. And praise God on that very first day, he was the light. And he was your salvation then, and he's your salvation now. And I'll bring it back to Vacation Bible School. All he has to do, all you have to do is accept it. That's it. And he will carry you through. He will place you where you need to be, around people who you need to be with. But you have to accept him. A, B, C. Anybody remember those? A, admit to God that you're a sinner and repent. B, believe that Jesus is God's own son. C, confess your faith that Jesus is Lord of your life. And that's it. It's that simple. And you keep your focus on him. And all this stuff that we have to go through in this life, it's going to be okay. And you're going to win. Not because of anything that you've done on your own strength, but because of Jesus that saved you through it all and has pulled you through. So that's my challenge, is for you to rise up to the occasion, no matter what it is. Praise the Lord, we have a, uh, ACAP testing next week. I don't know if you still have to fill in the little bubbles, but I still have nightmares writing my name. And I was thanking God that my mama gave me a short name because my Lacey has five letters. You have to find the L, find the A. Praise the Lord for this ACAP testing. No, that's not what you do. 
praise the Lord that I get to take these tests and that they'll help me with my future and help me learn and put me on the path that I can succeed. Thank you, God, for these teachers and this school and this church that love me. But I'll leave you with this. It's from Deuteronomy 28. If you fully obey the Lord, he will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but they're going to flee from you in seven. He's going to fight your battles for you. You just have to trust him and you have to stand in faith that he's going to complete the good work that he started in you. Have a good week, 10 kids. Bye-bye.